Good evening and a warm welcome to Empowering You for Victory. Moen and I send our fondest love greetings to every one of you. Tonight, I want to share with you that mature sons have solutions for the world's problems. Mature sons have solutions for the world's problems. I want to read from Isaiah chapter 60, from verse 1 to verse 5. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy sons shall come from afar, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because of the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee and the forces or the wealth of the Gentiles. The unbelievers shall come unto thee. God richly, richly bless the reading of his word. The scriptures that I've read declare that darkness covers the earth and gross darkness the people. My, in 72 years of my life, I've never known darkness to intensify so much upon the earth. I've never known gross darkness to cover people as we are getting exposed to it today. I've never known such horrific depths of corruption and the spirit of mammon and greed, and lust, and manipulation, like how I see today. However, the Bible is so clear that we bring solutions to a hurting world. We find a need, and we fill it. We find hurts, and we heal them. This hurting world, covered with Darkness, people covered with gross darkness are our inheritance. We have an inheritance that is full of needs because of the fall of man. We have an inheritance that is full of pain. But we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. The message says the salt of the earth we bring out God flavors. Why don't you be like God? Because you are created in the image of God that actually sees what wicked people could become. It's not that God is not aware of sinners, but he saw that if Jesus died for their sins, and you and I share with them the gospel, they could become the sons of God. God our Father causes the sun to shine on the good and the evil. God our Father causes the rain to come down on the good and the evil. And God our Father speaks to us to love our enemies, to pray for them, to do good unto those that despitefully use us. That does not mean your enemies become your friends, but it means you have the love of God in your heart to be compassionate to anyone who is trying to do harm to you. There's none of us that do not have some enemies. I'm not saying you're an enemy, 
but other people are not happy with you. And when I pray with my family in our devotions, I forgive my enemies. I ask God in front of my wife and children and Kyra, my grandchild, to bless their families, to have mercy on those that are despitefully using me. And I say to God, I do not want a revengeful heart. I don't want to revenge my enemies. But you said, Father, vengeance belongs to you. You will repay. Lord, the way I understand that, you will repay me for everything I lost that my enemies defrauded me with. I am not looking at you to destroy my enemies. I'm asking you, Father, that you would have mercy on my enemies and you'll help them to come to a place of repentance. I pray for their families. I pray for their spouses. I pray for their children and their grandchildren. And I'm aware of the wickedness that they do. But I pray that you'll deliver them and you'll have them to repent like the prodigal son came to themselves. That is how you are the salt of the earth. You bring out the God flavors in the earth even though the food is bland and got no taste because there's no more salt that was put in there. But because we are the salt, we are planted into these situations so we would bring the flavor of God through the people's lives that are trying to hurt us. Let every one of us be delivered from reactiveness. Let every one of us be delivered from being negative towards enemies. But Lord, we are asking you that you'll protect that which pertains to us. We do not want anything from another human being that does not belong to us. Oh God, deliver us from that mentality of entitlement that we see what belongs to other people, that it should come to us also. Oh God, that is an ungodly thought. Please help all my sons and daughters that they don't think like that, God. You are our Father. Then we're the light of the world. So darkness is covering the earth, cross darkness the people. But if we can shine forth the kingdom of God, shine forth the goodness of the Lord, when somebody tries to squeeze you, to destroy you, what oozes out of you and I? We must examine ourselves. Is Jesus oozing out of us? Or is the nature of Satan oozing out of us? The hissing of a serpent. So set a guard over our mouths, O oh God. Let the meditations of our hearts and the words of our mouths be acceptable unto you. So we're teaching you still on goal setting. Make a list of all the obstacles and foreseeable problems that will hinder you from fulfilling your destiny and plan solutions. You have the privilege of having foresight. You've got hindsight. You've got insight. But God's also given you foresight by the Holy Spirit. So you engage the Holy Spirit when you're making your goals and your plans and start speaking to yourself. What are the problems that I could encounter on my journey to fulfill my best life or my goals and my dreams? You see, friends, problems are part of life. You know what is stopping you from living in the mansion of your dreams? It's something called problems. 
So if you don't know how to solve problems, you'll die a poor person. The wealthy people, I'm not talking about wicked wealth, I'm talking about righteous wealth, they solve problems. Think of anything that was created, aeroplane. It was a, a, a solution to the problems of quicker travel. Think of a motor car. That was created by a solution to a mode, to a problem where there's no transport. Think about the fridge in your home. All the food that will get rotten within a day or two in summer. That was a problem. Someone who created refrigeration solved that problem. And most households have fridges. Think about the lights. There was a problem of darkness. So someone created the light bulb. What motivated the creation of all these things I'm speaking about? It was problems that motivated the creation of solutions. But if you like an ostrich with your head buried in the sand, and you cannot exercise foresight, what problems will you, can you anticipate that if I set these powerful dreams and these problems arise, how will I handle it? Will I change my lane now and look for another word from God? Will I change this lane now and look for another direction from God? You see, you'll never find a free easy road in life without problems. Mark my words. Problems are part of life. But if you're a problem solver in the way you think, and you can think in terms of solutions to problems, you will become a wealthy person. God richly bless you. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for all our online viewers. I bless them now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Bye-bye.